Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, very special, first time on the podcast. I got myself I got myself an Academy Award nominee, folks. This is David Rabinowitz. Hey, Jay. How's it going? <laughs> well, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good. <laughs> I feel like you should be pretty good. This is... Um, it's an honor to have you. You're, uh, Bert, David and I know each other. We both uh, perform at the Pack Theater. Um, but David has had a lot of uh, cool success this year uh, because he is one of the writers of the movie Black Klansman. That's correct. Which is a, f- a great movie, and it's gotten a whole bunch of well-deserved accolades and uh, just got nominated for an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay. It's really Very weird. Very exciting. It's yeah, exciting. how does that feel? I, you know, it's um, surreal, I think. Mm-hmm. It's... Um, I don't know. It's it's not something that is easy is easy to process. I can imagine, and not something that I ever expected. You know, um, so yeah, I think I'm just. I mean, we. I just found out like uh, a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, a few days ago. So it's still very new. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I mean, it's one. It's one of those things that it seems like there's got to be a lot. There's a lot. There's a there's a lot to process with it. Yes, I can only imagine. Yes. <laughs> well. You seem like you're handling it pretty well. Uh, on the outside. On the outside. <laughs> on the inside, a storm is I'm raging. freaking out. Inside of David. Um, well, you're ha- you you got a good facade on there. Oh, that's good. That's the important thing. That's all that really matters in the end. <laughs> um, I am very excited to have you on today. You come in to talk some smack about a movie that is fairly beloved. Uh, yeah. That movie, National Lampoon's Animal House. Right, the official title, right? The official. We're doing, we're going with it. it's, it's Christian name. Uh, <laughs> this movie, a 1978 American comedy film directed by John Landis, written by Harold Ramis, Douglas Kenny, Chris Miller, stars John Belushi, Donald Sutherland's in this movie, Tom Hulse, uh, and and it's a considered a class. It's, it's named on the the American the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. Uh, number one on Bravo's 100 Funniest Movies. Very, very high honors for this movie. Um, made so much money at the box office. Very well regarded. Kevin Bacon's in this movie. Yep. There's so much about this movie. But you don't like it. You don't like it for you know, what reasons? Well, okay. So I'm a screenwriter. Yep. I know how hard it is to write a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I write comedy uh, occasionally. Right. I perform comedy uh, I know how hard comedy is. Yeah. Um, I've worked in the film business recently. I know how hard it is to make movies. Right. So I'm not, it does not give me much pleasure to criticize <laughs> films. <laughs> that being said, Animal House is garbage. Oh boy, oh boy. This is the, this is the most fired up I think I've ever seen you. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> well, so what do you, what? Let's just walk through it. Wait, if you had to hear, if you had to sum up your take on me, this movie, you want me to give my opening statements. Opening counselor? statements, throw, um, throw them at me. Okay. Do you have notes? I did. Oh, I, great! I love notes. I don't notes. hide your notes. I Keep notes. them out, buddy. I love. I, just, them. I don't want to put them down on the table. Notes. So, in case it buzzes, but go okay. for it. So, this movie is lazy, uninspired, not funny, boring. Misogynist and racist. Yes, it, it is it all. It is a lot of those things. Sucks. But let me ask you a question. <laughs> ask. Did you watch it recently? I watched prepare? it right before we came in today. Excellent. How many times did you laugh? Uh, you know, not as many as I did the first time. There are some parts in this movie that I think are funny. I definitely did not enjoy it as much as I did the first time I watched it. I'm just curious the parts that you enjoyed because there are. Let's I. I um, made a, a a laughing or near laughing reaction maybe three or four times okay. watching it this most recent time. Okay. How um, many times have you seen it? Oh, okay. 
Only twice. Okay. I will say, and it's not, I feel like a lot of the love for this movie, it relates to nostalgia. People mm-hmm. watching it either when it first came out, when it was a huge cultural thing. Right. And then, but also people watching it in their childhoods. And I did not watch it in my childhood. The first time I watched it was like five or six years ago. So yeah. I, I, I didn't have that going. We're kind of the same boat. That's basically the first That's time when I you watched saw it. it. Okay. Yeah. But then you enjoyed it. Okay. I did. I, but I, also I was in, I was in a frat in college. So there's a lot of like that gotcha. kind of nostalgia tied in I there. The for familiarity. That for me. Um, but yeah, so I watched it this time, and the po- parts that I laughed at, the the end sequence where they're doing the parade, the par- well, not just the not the parade specifically, but literally the, post, the actual the, the post scripts, script, the post okay. scripts. Yeah, I, I agree. That's one of the more clever parts. I think that's funny. There is one part in the parade that I laughed at when the the girl in the Playboy bunny outfit goes through, through the, the, window. the kid's window, and he's reading the Playboy. Thank you, God. That's a great. Yep. I laughed at that. Yep. But I'm looking at the plot, and there's a lot of stuff before that that I uh, I did not laugh at. Plot? There, this, and I'm saying the plot is, on. There's a plot, plot section on Wikipedia. Is, the, is that is that a, a a word that should be should be associated with this movie? At I don't all? I don't think so. This is a pl- this is a movie that is very. There's more actual description of the plot here on this Wikipedia page than I think there is in the actual movie. You are correct, sir. <laughs> um, you mentioned Donald Sutherland is in this movie. He's mm-hmm. one of the bright spots for me. He's, yeah, I think he's funny. Yeah, uh, John Belushi also. Even though he's given a lot of shitty things to do, he his talent shines through because right. he was a genius. John Belushi's great. He's, he's great. He's fantastic in this movie. Uh, even at moments like being more subtle, like there's there's big aspects to the performance and then the, one of the moments that I like is when he smashes the guitar. And yeah. Then that little moment after he smashes it and he's just like, sorry. Uh-huh. Like he kind of underplays that. And it's like, oh, that is John Belushi coming through and making the movie, you know, giving it its, one of its few bright spots. Mm-hmm. Um him even before before he starts the food fight in the cafeteria when he eats the jello with his hands. Yeah. Oh, the piling it on the 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 food on his tray and everything. Mm-hmm. It's funny. It's funny. These are the parts that people remember because they they are the only good parts of the movie and they're like barely good. Okay, Donald Sutherland. In this first scene, he's the professor. Right. He's teaching the class Paradise Lost by John Milton. Yes. He has this to say about John Milton. He, you know, he's, he's trying to be serious, and then he's like, okay, class. John Milton, he's a little long-winded. He doesn't translate well into our generation, and his jokes are terrible. I wonder, is he talking about John Milton, or is he talking about the movie Is he's he in? talking about National Lampoon's Animal, Animal, Animal House? House? Exactly. He could be. So is here's, he- here's, okay, okay, man, I mean, you hit several nails on some heads. Uh-huh. I think... Here's how I how did how how it felt for me rewatching this movie was I felt totally comfortable getting up and and going away from the movie at certain points. Oh, because it was boring. Because yeah. it, it was an hour forty five minutes and it should have been eighty minutes. It should have been eighty minutes. That is this movie is way too long. Way too long. This movie is so long. I can't. That's my biggest gripe all the time with movies, and this movie in particular. It's a comedy. If you're a comedy movie, get in and out of there in 90 minutes or less. 90 minutes or less. You Agreed. have no, no reason to go over that. Yeah. Oh, but we have to see the scene where uh, the guy is doing push-ups <laughs> near the poop. Right. Because it's... <laughs> There's so many like physical um, at- attempts at physical comedy, and there's no wit to them. There, there's no jokes. It's just a guy gets hit and falls down. That's yeah. the level of comedy. Yeah. There, it is it is witless. There is no level, and I don't think a motorcycle comes inside of a house. Yeah, that's comedy, right? Like, and I'm not. <laughs> I I love like lowbrow stuff, but uh-huh. like lowbrow stuff, there is an element of there's a there's a joke there. You know, here it's just people falling down, and that's supposed to be hilarious. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one of the other parts that I appreciate, and I'm okay. gonna see what you think about it. Okay, because this is definitely. If the bar, if we're on, the, we're talking lowbrow. This is pretty lowbrow. When they are having the meeting in the dean's office, it's uh-huh. the dean and the mayor, and then you cut and you see the dead horse still on the ground, and and, and, then and, the, and it, like an assistant the, and, trying to yeah, they're trying, and then they pull the chainsaw, and that's the where the movie, that's where it cuts to the next scene. That was pretty. I, the fact that they don't remark on the 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 horse, yeah, uh, that's a level of wit that exists in that scene that does not exist in the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I agree. That was pretty good. And the Dean is a, I, I think he's a great performance. He does. Uh, he gives a good performance. Is like the, the classic, you know, 
uh, uptight dean who just wants to get rid of the, the, the frat. It's been parried in a million times. And this guy sets the bar for it. Oh, he is the ultimate. He is the guy. Without Dean Wormer, there's no other, there's, there, there's, there's no, no performance now, that people can map onto. To that point. Okay. Animal House it kind of created a genre, right? Yes. It's inspired a bunch of, it invented the college comedy. Yeah. It's a situation where I think a, a rare, if exceptional situation, where the original movie is inferior to every single movie it has inspired. Ah, okay. Everything like, else is clear in the bar. Old school. A million times better than Animal House. Uh, re- kind of recently, Neighbors. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I saw it in theaters. I enjoyed it. It's it's Shakespeare compared to Animal House. <laughs> Even um, like PCU. PCU. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Oh, yeah. We did P- I talked about PCU on the show. On the show? Yeah. I would contend. I don't think this is hyperbole. You take one random scene of PCU. There's more wit and humanity in that one scene than Animal House has in its entire. And that's PCU. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's really bad. I, I need to, I, I keep your notes out. I've this got, is, this is fascinating okay. to me because I know, cause and that's the other thing is I knew you would, you, I know you'd approach it from a screenwriting perspective because yes. you are, you're a, you know, talented screenwriter. You understand that that's one of the things that when I watched this movie again, I was like, oh, this, there's, there's no plot here. No. Yeah, there's well, absolutely, this is paper thin. Let's talk structure. Paper thin. That's an insult to, uh, to paper. <laughs> to paper. Um, <laughs> The, okay, uh, so the it, it feels like these guys got together, they did a bunch of cocaine, yeah. and they wrote a first draft, and they shot that. That's, I mean, I think that's basically how the movie got made. Yeah, it And it feels like that. Completely. Yeah. All right. Did you know the treatment for this movie was 110 pages long? What? Yeah. They, uh, they were writing this movie. The screenplay, the treatment ran 110 pages. What was on it? A coke residue, I guess. I don't <laughs> Probably. know. See, coke is not ideal for it, coke. Will produce quantity. It will not produce quality. That's true. You know, that's um, how we got. I mean, that's how that's how the eighties happened. <laughs> quantity over quality. That's all they cared about. That is true. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk structure for a second, please. The way the movie starts out is, I'm I'm fine with it from a story percep- perception. Um, uh, Tom, you got Tom Hulse who right. The whole time you're watching, you're like, I'd rather, I wish I was watching Amadeus, you know, <laughs> instead of this, because that's one of the best movies ever, and this is a horrible stain. Right. You watch this movie, and you don't think there's ever any way that Tom Hulse is ever going to get is nominated gonna, for an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Nobody in this movie should ever get nominated ever. for awards based on this movie, and yet, here we are. And, and yet, here we are. And hey, I'm not, I'm not going to be negative toward any of the people behind it. I mean, Harold Ramis obviously has had a great career Mm -hmm. he did ghostbusters he did uh groundhog day right right? like and ivan reitman produced this movie again more more ghostbusters he's got all he's got a ton of there's a lot of talent a lot of talent a lot of talent that being said this thing is shit Uh, (laughs) so so you have that opening scene, then you, you see the Dean for the first time, and he's like, this, the Delta frat, I want to get rid of them. Right. And then there's no consequences until, like, 45 minutes in when the Dean, like, actually threatens them. Right. He's like, I'm going to, you guys are on double secret probation or whatever. And then nothing happens until a half hour later where there's that courtroom scene, sort of, where they, and then... Um, and it's it's really funny because they start yelling blowjob in the middle of it. Right. It's really funny because blowjob that that's uh, a, a term for oral sex, and it shouldn't be in a courtroom. Right. So I was laughing very hard because they kept saying it over and over again. I, be- I believe that that is the reaction to this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they when they like and then finally kind of like in the end of the second act when they actually do get expelled okay finally something happens right what do they do road trip right that's okay. it they just ignore this this the story and you could right. kind of say that's a comment on like uh against structure but no they were just like stalling they just didn't know what to do they just wanted to do it. and well we can get to the, what happens at the road trip but like uh, right. just talking structure this there there it is you said Paper thin, yes. Well, whatever is less than paper thin. I think, uh, yeah. If there's, it's like toilet paper thin. It's like yeah. wet. It's like, like sing- cheap, this is some single ply, cheap, cheap Costco brand yeah. shit that is not gonna hold up to and any I, kind it, of it's scrutiny. A, it's, it's like when you go in and you because it's the cheapest you go in and then you immediately regret it because you have so much of it 
and, right. and now you're just stuck with that toilet paper that's for and, months. Yeah, but this is the this is the price that you pay for using the cheap shit. Exactly. And not giving and not using toilet paper that actually has structure to it. Right. Get right. a couple plies in there. <laughs> Get a couple plies in there. <laughs> Animal house. Um yeah, so the so it's it sounds weird to be talking about something called narrative momentum when <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh, like a dumb comedy movie, yeah. but like narrative momentum that's evergreen across any type of story you're telling right in any medium and I think that there are comedies out there that can that have narrative momentum there yes. are a lot of really good comedy movies that are that exist there exactly. just are They're, exactly and so I didn't I didn't interrupt because I wanted you to do your intro earlier but you said it was a number one on what list it was the number one this is on the uh the Bravo's 100 Funniest Movies. I don't know when that this was is made. insane. Do, do you know what else is on that list? Like, I, okay. I don't. Let's check out Bravo's 100 Funniest that is Movies. absolutely insane. I would love to see this list. Bravo's 100 Funniest Movies of all time includes National Lampoon's Animal House at number one. This is, okay, this is a bit... Let's go through, let's go through just the top ten top from 10. the bottom up. Okay. Bottom up, okay? Okay. Ten, Arthur from 1981. Okay. Dudley Moore. Right? Number nine, Blazing Saddles. Okay. Uh, hey, I, I can't argue against Mel Brooks. Number eight, The Wedding Singer. All right. I mean, it was, you know, it was good when we were growing up, but. Number seven, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Okay. I know what kind of list this is. Number six, Airplane. Okay. A good choice. Good choice. Number five, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Okay. A good choice. Number four, There's Something About Mary. Okay. This is the this is a real humdinger for you. Number three, Shrek. <laughs> okay. And then number two is Caddyshack. And then you got Animal House. Yeah. How could? Well, first of all, it's kind of a weird list, but all the those nine movies are all way better than Animal House, though. Way better. I haven't seen a lot of these movies. Well, um, I haven't seen I haven't seen like five of these movies that are on this list. I haven't yeah. seen Caddyshack, something about Mary. You, you haven't, haven't seen, seen Caddyshack. South Park. I haven't seen Caddyshack. Really? I don't know if you know this about me. I got a lot of blind spots in my cultural history because uh-huh. I grew up super sheltered, so I didn't watch a lot of stuff. Gotcha. That's why I saw Animal House so late is because I would have not been allowed to watch it. Gotcha. Okay. At that, the time that, that it that, would have been that makes sense now. Now and right. then Caddyshack, I did watch a lot when I was younger. Okay. Um, and so maybe the nostalgia of that, it, it, it makes me feel warmer toward that movie. But I guarantee if you went back, there are actual jokes in that movie. There are actual good, um, uh, like, I mean, the story is a disaster hey, also. Can I ask but, you this, but what? is there narrative momentum? A little bit, because there's like a, a golf game at the end in the, in the third act. Uh-huh. But no, I mean, before that, not really. <laughs> <laughs> These guys were still figuring it out very much. Right. But we're going to talk about Animal House, Animal which House, is a right. movie that has – it's – here's – on my feelings of this movie at, yes. like, the end of the day, I watched this movie and I still – I still would not – I wouldn't say – I don't have the strong dislike of this movie that you do. I don't think right. – I don't think it's garbage. But I don't think it's a particularly good movie either. I think okay. it's right down the middle. Right I think down the middle. Just ba- like like do you think three it, stars. Do you think it deserves its uh, classic status? You know, if only for the fact that it did create an entire genre of movie, then yes. But I also agree with you that there are so many movies in that genre now that have raised the bar and Clips made this it. a Clips better, it. a way better you don't movie. Need, yeah. It's like well, yeah. You know what? It's nice that it's inspired, it, mm-hmm. but it should hold up by it, it itself. So you've got the Tom Holtz character, who's kind of protagonist-ish, right? There's not. It's it, not really there's a protagonist. Not, there's no one to, to hang on to. Tom Holtz. He's kind of, but he's personality less. Um, and you're not even you're not really focusing on him a lot. The those the two kind of leaders of the frat, yeah, uh, Otter and Boone. Otter and Boone, they're so obnoxious. They're like kind of supposed to be like these kind of like cool, like you're rooting for them because like they're cool, but they're such pricks. And there's that scene kind of early on where they're hitting the golf balls toward yeah, um, towards the ROTC people. ROTC people, um, and they're doing that thing where. Um, it's kind of like a funny scene where they're like talking about their golf game and everything and being real deadpan about that. Right. And that's like, 
that struck me as an incredibly unfunny scene that like if you took that scene as like a sketch and put it on stage somewhere like mm-hmm. in LA like that would get zero laughs yeah that, i think so that there the, there's the a game of that scene that is very thinks it's funny mm-hmm. it's self satisfied just as much as the characters are and gets no reaction at all right. from me and then the old, the 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 result of the scene is the the guy getting knocked in the head and then getting dragged by the horse right which is really funny because he's getting dragged by the by horse and, and he's getting injured. You right. Know? Oh, yeah. He has to wear in a neck brace after that. Neck brace is a great comedy prop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know things are funny unless I see people in a neck brace. <laughs> so there's a lot. And the, and the big, you know, other. I would like to unpack some of the other complaints that you have yes. about this movie. Yes. So there's definitely some misogyny and racism in this movie. Yes. Now, there are movies that I've talked about on the show. That come from this era. This was made in the 70s. Yes. There's a lot of movies of that era in particular that have stuff that doesn't quite hold up given the current time period. Okay. Um, I think that this movie kind of kind of splits the difference. Like, there's some stuff that, that still works, but there's some stuff that does not work. Like, I think that the scene... Where uh, you have on Pinto, the, on the Tom angel Hulse, devil. the angel and the devil. Yeah. I think that scene is like surprisingly ahead of its time. But then you go like, oh, she's 13, which you find out right. way later on in the movie. And I'm like, oh, you guys, oh, what did you do? Because yeah. now I retroactively look at that and I'm like, what do I, hold on. Right, right. She was topless. Yes. So, yeah, I don't think that scene works at all. Okay. And like it's tough. I mean, it's forty years ago. It's hard to put yourself in that in that mindset. Yeah, I certainly have, have stopped trying. Yeah, but like, <laughs> so the situa- the the fact that it's commenting on something that happens like is a problem in college. Mm-hmm. That should be commended. Yeah, but what the film the film's attitude toward it, which is this is sort of the main character. He's sort of like the likable guy, right? And we're making it, it just a flippant joke out of it. Right. Is just, I think it's garbage. Okay. I, 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 and, oh, I can and, see why. And it's the ultimate sin of, I don't think it was, it's funny. Yeah. Like it did not make me laugh. So like, so we're just watching this, this angel devil scene. And you about, know what? I didn't really laugh at it either. Now that you think about it, now that I think about it, I think that there's, if this was a movie that had come out now, then that would probably be a scene that would get, if they ran it somewhere, that would be that would get clapped her. Oh, it wouldn't get actual laughter. If, yeah, I mean, if it if, if, if any if it made it into the movie at if all. If it made it but into the movie, yeah. Overall, though, like the all the women characters in this movie, they're just like props, basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has Karen Allen, you know, before Raiders of the Lost Ark, has no idea what to do with her. Right. Um, she is all over the place character wise, but that's none of the characters really in this movie are nailed down personality except for except for Bluto. Except for Bluto, and in his case, it's just he. I mean, he's probably the one character that kind of does work because there's nothing there, there's nothing there from the beginning, right? And I, I do appreciate the joke that he like becomes a senator at the end. That was, oh yeah, that was that's pretty great. clever. Um, but pl- talking about Bluto, there's a scene where he's j- he just climbs up on the ladder and just spies on the naked girls, and like, okay, it's a long scene. It's too. a long scene. There are no jokes in that scene. The right. joke is supposed to be he's looking at naked girls and getting aroused. Right. Th- that we're supposed to, that are, we're supposed what, to laugh. We're at We're supposed that. to laugh at that. And then he falls over. Because he's he he's he got too into horny. these girls. He, he got too over. horny. <laughs> His <laughs> boner knocked him off. The, that's that's what you got to be careful if you're going to climb a ladder and, and peep inside a window. That's true, right? Also, how do none of them see him or hear him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, it's really loud. It's really loud, and the windows are wide the fuck open. Yeah. And it's like he's. Su- how do they not? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's I don't that's another knock against this movie. Look, there's not realistic. Yeah, it's very unrealistic. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about what happens on this road trip. Oh, so the road God. trip involves the our our heroes, I guess we can call them, going to a bar that they see their their favorite band, Otis Day and the Knights. Yes, who they came and had hired for their toga party. Right. They go to this bar, and it's a bar 
where the population of the bar all black. All black. And well, we should say that before this, they go to I think Emily Dickinson College, right. all women's college, uh-huh. to get dates. To get dates. So it's them with their dates. And they're all white, and they walk into this bar, and everyone's black. Mm -hmm. And the music stops, of course. Right, of course. And everybody turns to look at them. Everyone turns to look at them. And honestly, like, could be – and this before any of the racist or misogynist stuff, this scene just does not take any – it should not be in this movie. (laughs) It doesn't doesn't make sense. Narratively, yeah. It got one laugh out of me when – uh, when Boone goes to the bar to get drinks and the guy, and he's looking at the, the guy next to him and then he pops out the switchblade. Uh-huh. I laughed at that. You laughed at that. Okay. Cause fair. it's like, well, they're going to be, but they don't need, but you could have cut after that and, and had them and, and had everybody leaving. And yeah. And it would right. have been, it would have achieved what it ultimately did, which is they're white and uncomfortable and they're going to leave the right, bar. Right. And so the, the jo- if the joke had just been on them being white and uncomfortable, that scene could have worked. Yes. Because that's a fundamental like thing that like people, anybody who feels like an outsider walking into a, you know, anywhere could, that, that that's, that's relatable. Right. That's something. But... <laughs> What did they do? What, what what did they do? They stay in the bar. They uh, first of all, they for, uh, Otter and his date leave because he's pretending to be a grieving fiance, right, which is a whole other thing. Which, which is, is a whole other thing. Yeah, whatever. The, then they get surrounded by four black guys who come and ask them to dance with their dates. They take the the girls to go dance, and the girls are like shaking their heads and like. Have super afraid. <laughs> yeah, and then they all leave. All, but not they leave the girls behind. The guys leave. Yep, the, they're running out of the bar this, screaming. This scene is a neo-Nazi David Duke fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a scene that people in Black Klansmen would, would appreciate had been in this movie because they're like, this is how they <laughs> this really is are. How it really are. are. Yes, and it's just so. And again, there are no jokes. There, there's not like. What are what are we laughing at here? And then the most insane part, which I completely missed the first time I watched it. Um, Tom, What's this? Tom Hulse is talking to his date, mm-hmm. and he, he's asking her. He's like, did, "Did you catch this?" He's like, "What are you majoring in?" And she's like, "Primitive cultures." And yeah. then cut to Oda, Otis Day. Otis Day. Oh, I did not catch and that. That's it. Is that's the cut. It. That was it. That's the joke. She says primitive cultures and then cuts to the black lead singer of this band. How? Wh- That's insane. They uh, they got they got they they got kind of bold with what they were making the jokes about for this movie. You're giving them a lot of credit. Bold, huh? I guess. Look, hey, that's that's <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice way to put it. That's right? the nicest way I can put it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. So, this movie is one of those things. I think. What else? What else have we not covered? I feel like there's some other. There's something else that I'm missing about why you don't like this movie um, that I want to unpack. Uh, it's, it's really bad. Did we cover that <laughs> I mean, part? It is, it's really bad. You covered that part. <laughs> I think that this movie has. Su- it, it's wasted. It's a wasted potential movie, and I understand that it's weird to say that in such hindsight, given that. I I am praising the movie for creating a genre, yeah. but it also has like it's hard. I, it's hard for me to like even nail down how to properly sum this up. Okay, like it doesn't make. There's so much of this movie that it could they could have gone in a different way and made something that actually had a little bit of linearity to it yep. instead of just feeling like. We're gonna string together a couple of plot points that we that we threw darts at yeah. to decide what we're gonna care about in this movie. Yeah, and we're gonna fill in the rest with with party scenes and production yeah. design and people and people getting wasted and, and yeah. John Belushi carrying this movie with comedy. Yeah. Um. Okay. That's well, what let, I think. I, I agree. And to take it a step further, let's um, let's uh, let's let's fix this movie. That's right what now. I was gonna okay. say. We, gonna what do? can we do to fix okay. this movie? Great. So. You you start roughly with how it it starts with uh, Tom Hulse and his friend going to the the douchey frat and getting turned away. Pinto and Flounder. Pinto and Flounder. You yep. got it. Um, 
let's let's make Pinto a little bit more of a personality, um, uh, and let's make Flounder a little less of a cartoonish oaf. <laughs> he you know? is a very cartoonish oaf. Um, let's keep Otter and um, Boone. Otter and Boone. Yeah. Let's let's keep them as more minor characters okay like they can still have their things but like let's not have them drive scenes as much okay and let's keep bluto roughly the amount that he's used yeah right okay we 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 have them go to you know uh to to delta and experience the parties then we go to dean and dean's like i want to get these guys you know right these, these, these guys these, these are they're staying on our, on staying, our campus yeah. and blah 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 right and then one or two scenes later, you see the first um, thing that the dean actively does to try to get the frat kicked off campus. Yeah. That's the thing. And then the frat has to react to that because they are under threat and they have to know like, okay, we are we – are, we are going to go down. But then there's an internal struggle between the threat, threat of people being like, let's just party versus there's people who actually care and not just not just saying, oh, whatever, let's just throw a toga party. No, there actually has to be people who are trying to like help right. and, and, and make things better. Maybe Tom Hulse has a way to, he ingratiates himself into the frat by helping them, um, you know, uh, do whatever like encounters right maybe he's got like he's got like uh, maybe he comes from a family of lawyers so he knows how to figure out hey we're if this is a we're going to this kangaroo court situation here's at least the best way we can defend ourselves or something like that Some, something like that some, some, something that is active there should be a um and this is kind of what neighbors did well there should be a a a uh, punch and counter punch uh, structure to this in right. which the dean makes a move the frat makes a move the dean makes a move the frat makes a move and the dean's trying to do things in his way and the frat is doing their things in their fratty way and then within that you get all like the fun party stuff fun, right quote unquote fun party stuff but now it's there's a there's a narrative to hang things on yeah and that that courtroom ish scene that's probably maybe the midpoint mm-hmm. and, and not the, like almost at the end of not, the movie exactly not almost at the end i think you keep the the parade scene because it's a nice set piece a great set piece but if you're if you're actually setting up the 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 subplots properly everything would kind of snap together easily you get rid of all of the stupid uh Pratt falls things you get rid of uh, maybe you keep the ROTC thing because that guy's funny, but I don't know. But stuff's a distraction. Like the douchey frat is enough of a villain, and the dean is enough of a villain. I don't think you need the ROTC stuff. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm with you on that. You don't need to have that additionally in there. Right. It's not doing anything. Not not doing anything. Um. Yeah, but it's funny that now that I think of it, like we're just we're writing like old school or like neighbors. Right, we are. I mean, <laughs> even PCU. I and I say this just because I've seen it more recently than old school and neighbors. PCU, you find out that they're going to lose the house so early in the movie unless they pay off these fines. They just like it happens maybe twenty minutes in, right? And, and which is a little bit late, but it's still like it's early enough that you're like, oh, at least I know what the stakes are right. for these for these it's people. Like, it's like the, the the act one turn. I mean, w- w- what is drama, especially in a movie? It's a character or group of characters who you like who you want to see succeed are plunged into a difficult situation where they have a very specific goal right and then there are obstacles in their way and them overcoming the obstacles and there's more obstacles and that is conflict that is drama yeah and animal house fails at that very specific directive Mm -hmm. and uh i um I don't like it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. From a screenwriting perspective, not even with just Animal House, do you feel like there are too many comedies that sacrifice storytelling for jokes that are just kind of random and nonsensical and, and, and don't add to the story? Or do you feel like that's not really a problem that movies face in the mo- in like the way modern comedies are made? I, I think it is a problem. I think maybe you have to go a little bit more specific than comedy. Like into a subgenre okay. of comedies. Like that's w- probably a, an issue I have with like spoof movies. Like Oh yeah, like your da- like your your date movie and your your scary right. I mean th- those those scary are, th- movie, those are kind of thing. pretty bad, but even like a a really good one like Walk Hard, right? Okay. Um great jokes, great performances and everything and there's individual moments that are like really great. Like have you seen that? I have. It's been a like, while, but I've seen it. Like you could watch the Beatles scene, and it, that's just a, has does nothing for the movie, but just a self contained, like really incredible piece of comedy, like five right. minutes of comedy. But um, 
it's like it's one of those things that like y- the movie itself doesn't care enough mm-hmm. about its own story and like it you you lose you you lose that momentum like the jokes okay. can be funny but like you the the way that it, ideally that you write a comedy is you you write it as a drama first right you make the story work you make the characters work the 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 relationships the goals the objectives and then you throw the jokes on you don't start with the jokes and clearly in case of animal house all they had were jokes right but not even jokes that's the thing it's like i remember i watched this and i do remember like i like i said i was in a frat in college and there was a lot of stuff that we did that i remember is like oh yeah this is kind of probably the somebody got the idea to do this because they watched animal house like we would play shout at parties and people would do the whole fucking rigmarole from the movie yeah um but i think also be having been in a frat i know that there are the ways that people can approach relationships in the frat, whether it's interpersonal or romantic, and that kind of stuff, there is a lot of like rich drama to be had there. And I think that that is also maybe why, and I haven't seen any of these, there's a lot more dramatic movies about fraternities coming out now. We, um, in the past like five years, there's been that sh- Burning Sands on Netflix Burning and Sands, Goat, right. and there's a couple other ones that I can't think of, but those are two that like immediately come to mind. Right. Because, and, of, because of everything that's been happening, probably right. And I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you could mine for like for it, it doesn't have to be dramatic. Like you can still make a comedy that's set at a frat house, but actually make it feel kind of realistic. Well, I I think Neighbors did that yeah. very well. And uh, you know Zac Efron, and I haven't seen it since it came out in theaters, but I was really impressed by his performance there and his character. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had like kind of interpersonal stuff within the frat and there, there was an arc there. Yeah. I gotta um, watch neighbors. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it's, I would, you, you watch animal house and then you watch neighbors and you'll see, you'll see the difference. Well, that's what I'm going to have to do now. <laughs> well, thanks for, uh, thanks for enlightening me to that. And thanks for coming in today to talk of about, of course, a, and to, to lambast a comedy <laughs> that everybody loves. <laughs> Except for us. Except for us. I and think it's okay. Th- but there, you hate it. there have to be others that have that, that have seen it and are like, what, what is this? I think there probably are. And if you are one of those people, give us a shout on our social medias, which you know, mine at diet J on Twitter and Instagram, David, what you got? Um, I'm on Twitter. I don't really use it that much, but it's D underscore Ribbonowitz, my last name. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, you haven't seen it, please go see black Klansman, which they put, it's back in theaters now, right? Back in theaters for, for, yeah, for a limited time, but it's also on uh, Blu-ray. Check it out. It's a, it's a great movie and it's nominated for a bunch of Oscars and this, and it's, uh, it's a very fun watch because you're, uh, you guys will hopefully enjoy it. And, uh, thanks for coming on today, dude. Thanks a lot. This has been blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. (laughs) 